Today on Show Me St. Louis, a St. Louis treasure is celebrating 35 years. We'll take you into the fabulous Fox and show you a few things you probably miss on your way into a show. So what is this? And we'll go behind the scenes and into places you can't typically go for a ride in an unexpected place. We're going down now into the basement of the Fox Theater. Plus a couple of places to grab a bite before or after a show. Show Me St. Louis starts now. Good morning, I'm Heidi Glaus. On this day, 35 years ago, the fabulous Fox reopened, and how lucky are we that it did. So this morning, we're celebrating this St. Louis treasure. We're starting with a tour that points out a few things you probably miss on your way into a show. It is one of our city's finest treasures. A movie palace built to impress an incredible structure that opened in January of 1929. Yes, 1929, six million dollars. Laura Shelton knows all the ins. This is called the Storm Lobby. And outs of the Fox and the Old Theater with a brass box office window outside and two smaller ones inside. If it was bad weather, then they would use these two smaller ones here. The grandness of the place greets you at the doors, but the curtain about came down on it in 1978 when the Fox Theater was boarded up. There was pigeons, there was rats, the plaster was falling down. A jewel emerged from the rough when it was restored to its original glory in 1982. So all the light fixtures in here, these brass fixtures, are original. All the kick plates, all the handles had been stored and no one knew it was there except this watchman. They just recently discovered these ornate ashtrays. Everything in the Fox is over the top. There are so many things people on the way into a show miss. So what is this? It's central vacuuming. I mean, I thought that vac central vac was relatively a new invention, but in 1929, the Fox had central vacuuming, it had air conditioning, and it had elevators. There are camels, geese, and lions carved into the plaster above, and more elephants than you can count on the carpet below. An elephant with the trunk up is good luck, and every trunk has to face the elephant over the stage. They're all little details Laura has been sharing with visitors for more than 20 years. I usually stop here and have people look up and look down because it's the perfect place to see the colonnades. And the architect, C. Howard Crane, that's what he was famous for, was the colonnade effect. There are hidden treasures on every floor. These are original. Um, they were here when it, the theater opened. They are cloisonne elephants. They were supposedly 100 years old, and this is uh, Fox bought them from the Kaiser Wilhelm estate. Incredible craftsmanship around every corner, and a handwritten history of who's played here backstage. The graffiti here is unbelievable, and that's just something a lot of people aren't expecting. It actually started out with two very small signatures up by the star's dressing room. It is a theater that is simply fabulous from floor to ceiling, a place that shines as bright today as it did when it first opened. Oh, I love that place. You can take a guided tour of the fabulous Fox and learn even more about the place. They're offered at 1030 on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and last about an hour and a half. It's $8 during the week or $10 on Saturday because that one includes an organ presentation. To learn more, go to fabulousfox.com and click on the visit tab. So you can hear the organ on Saturday, but you're about to get a different sort of organ presentation. Right, Dana Dean? That's right. The Fox is actually home to two Wurlitzer organs. The one in the main auditorium is especially fascinating. This show at the fabulous Fox Theater isn't on stage. It's in front of the stage. The sounds of an entire orchestra are coming from just one man playing the Wurlitzer organ, an instrument installed in the fabulous Fox Theater 89 years ago. And she's doing pretty good. The Fox has three people who take turns playing the organ for Saturday tours. Not only do they know how to tickle the ivories, but they aren't scared of heights. Luckily, no. <laughs> I'd be in a fix if I were. Because at the Fox, the mighty Wurlitzer organ has its very own elevator. The big thrill, I think, seeing the organ come out of the floor. This Wurlitzer organ can move 10 feet above the floor, but it also goes underground. 
organist David Stevens invited me for a ride. Push the down button. This right here? That's it. We're going down now into the basement of the Fox Theater. Now this is a view I'm not used to seeing at the Fox. All you see are the lifts of the big orchestra pit. Push the up button. Up. Ooh. <laughs> Actually, it runs pretty smooth. The late Stan Can, who appeared on The Tonight Show 77 times, played the Fox Theater's Wurlitzer organ from 1953 to 1975. At intermission between the movies, Stan would play, and uh, the movie would end, the theater still dark, and they'd throw on the spotlight, and the organ would rise. What people don't see from their seats is just how mighty the mighty Wurlitzer is. I think this is it, okay. It has more than 2,500 pipes and 500 plus tuned percussions and is spread out in seven rooms on the third and fourth floors. It's Al Haker's job to go from room to room and keep everything sounding like it did back in 1929. There are actually computers that do this in a little box, but we've, we've strived to maintain it in its original condition. So we spend, expend a lot of hours so we can preserve the art form as it was in the 20s. Saturday public tours at 10.30 a.m. include an organ presentation at one of the two Wurlitzer organs located in the theater. The second one is in the lobby. That, it's just an incredible instrument. It and is complicated. Amazing. <laughs> that it fills seven rooms. Yeah, and it was pretty scary going down there <laughs> in the basement. And writing it up. <laughs> and writing it up, yeah. <laughs> I guess there's nowhere for you to hold on. No, it's not it's not for me. And I don't know how to play, but it was really fun to go on. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Dana. Well, in honor of Throwback Thursday, we went into the Show Me Vault for a story on a different kind of Fox tour. It's a peek of what you might or might not see on a ghost tour at the old theater. Step inside the fabulous Fox Theater and you immediately see the beauty, the ornate fixtures, the magnificent 2,000 pound chandelier. And every time I walk into this building or give a tour, I'll see something that I didn't see before. But for the first time, tour guides like Melody McGowan are shining a light on things not quite as noticeable. The employees here, we've all had some kind of experience over the years. They are unexplained, reoccurring circumstances. Numerous times here, the, the toilets will flush on their own. Spirits that apparently like this place as much as the rest of us. I have smelt the smell of a cigar. Normally, it's right through here. It's close to this door because I would always try and check and see, is there somebody in there trying to sm you know, hide, a, hide smoking a cigar? She's not the only one to pick up the scent. This is not your a sheet over you and use pulleys and everything kind of goes. These have actually been documented now by the St. Louis Paranormal Research Society. They actually had saw documented like a puff of smoke. Now I've never seen a puff. I've just uh, smelt it. When I read that, I was like a hallelujah. I was not crazy. Actually, they found several entities. Actually, one of the apparitions that was discovered was over there in that area and we have it documented, we have a picture of it. It shows a figure sitting in the seat. Something suspicious on every floor. We're going into the screening room, so what they would do, they would use the projectors to show the movies to decide which they were gonna show and which not. It's also where voices have been heard. And they've heard someone say, Eve, um, take a call or make a call. Eve was the wife of William Fox who built this movie palace in 1929. The place where you come to see great performances on stage, but never know who's really watching you. Kind of creepy. The fabulous Fox Ghost Tours have sold out the last couple of years. Tour dates and tickets for this year haven't been released yet. We should have that info next week and as soon as we get it, we'll share it with you. One of the showstoppers, if you will, at the Fox is the chandelier that hangs over the seats. It's made up of more than 2,000 pieces of jeweled glass and weighs 5,280 pounds. It has 160 light bulbs, all of which have to be changed. And to do that, the crew has to drop this masterpiece down to the mezzanine level and climb inside. This video is from 96 or 97 when they first showed us how they lower it with a pulley system. They don't have to do it as often as they used to, thanks to LEDs. Now, there 
Coming up, we'll show you a couple of places to grab a bite before a show, including a sushi place, doing things a little differently. And it's billed as St. Louis's first champagne bar. We'll show you what else you'll find at Curtain Call Lounge and why this is a great place after a show at the Fox. Stick around, show me St. Louis is just getting started. Welcome back. One place to grab a bite near the Fox is Baiku Sushi Lounge. Dana loves sushi and this is probably my favorite place for it. So what did you think? Uh, yeah, I loved it. Loved it. And this is my first time at the sushi spot in Midtown. It's less than half a mile away from the Fox and is the perfect time for dinner before a show. This knife is like an extension of Elliot Harris's hand. It takes a little bit of practice. He's a chef who's been sharpening his sushi skills for the past 20 years. I mean, with sushi, you pretty much have a knife in your hand throughout the night. So, I mean, every cut is... There, there, there's a lot of cutting, there's a lot of precision, there's a lot of technique. Technique, like de-seeding a cucumber from the skin into the core. I like to do that for the uh, the wakame salad presentation. Marinated seaweed salad on a bed of shredded beets, uh, and then it sits inside of the actual cucumber itself. You can find Chef Elliot rolling up classics with a twist at Baiku Sushi in Midtown. We like to do things a little bit different. So, standard, traditional technique, but I would say our presentations are a little more progressive. Like this roll shaped like a clover. Become very popular, just nice and fresh. Uh, cilantro, jalapeno, Japanese hamachi, um, wrapped in the, the mami nori, which is the green soy paper. For a bolder flavor, he suggests the fisherman roll. Spicy yuzu crab, yuzu is a Japanese citrus with cucumber, avocado, and pickled burdock root, which gives it a nice smoky finish. Uh, topped with striped bass, a little chili mayonnaise, uh, fresh jalapeno, seared with a torch. People see the blowtorch come out and they get pretty excited. The restaurant has a unique layout. It's in a space that once served coffee and breakfast items. Well, we're in the cafe space and we're connected with the Hotel Ignacio. We share the uh, lobby lounge space. Baiku means motorcycle in Japanese, which explains this art on the wall. That is a motorcycle that Steve Smith, who is the owner of the restaurant, had disassembled. But what do motorcycles have to do with sushi? We're in the Midtown Moto Complex, of which Triumph Grill, Baiku Sushi Lounge, Moto Europa Retail Store, uh, the Motorcycle Museum. A unique sushi experience that'll have you coming back for more. And you'll find Baiku Sushi Lounge at 3407 Olive Street in Midtown. The number is 314-896-2500. It is open today from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. And make sure to like them on Facebook at Baiku Sushi. Now, Heidi, I know you always say I never bring you back food. You did this I eat time. I brought it back for and you. It, and it was delicious. And I ate half of it and gave you the rest. Yeah, it was very kind of you. <laughs> so good, right? <laughs> yes, so good. Thanks, Data. <laughs> you can also park once and pull up a chair at Curtain Call Lounge. You'll find lots of shareable items on the menu. There's the chicken bacon ranch pizzette, which is a delicious flatbread. You can also stick your fork into stuffed portobello or try the peach and tomato salad topped with beautiful flowers that are edible. Of course, Curtain Call is known as the first champagne bar in St. Louis, so you'll find plenty to drink as well. So we have, you know, like 40 different champagnes plus all these champagne cocktails. We're one of the few places in St. Louis that has champagne on tap. Stephen Proctor, the executive chef, also suggests swinging by after the show for dessert. You can grab a glass of champagne or a cappuccino and watch the traffic go by. He and his staff have several great desserts, but two seem to stand out among the rest. Our number one seller is our black and white cheesecake. It's a chocolate vanilla swirl cheesecake. We have a fun new dessert, which is called a limoncello flute. It's vanilla gelato and limoncello curd, and we serve it in a champagne glass. Mm, mm, mm. Curtain Call Lounge is right next door to the Fabulous Box Theater in Grand Center. It's open on show days before and after a show. You can take a look at the rest of the menu and hours of operation at fabulousbox.com. Just click on the visit tab. Another spot in Grand Center where you can grab dinner is at the Dark Room at the Grand L. It's a short walk from the Fabulous Box. It features delicious foods and wines in a space that's also a photo gallery with rotating shows and a live music venue. You can hear live music Wednesday through Sunday. The Dark Room is also open for lunch Wednesday through Saturday from 11 to 4. You can learn more about the place online at thedarkroomstl.com. Still ahead, we'll run through the 2017-2018 season and tell you about the musical that will put R&B singer Deborah Cox to center stage this October. 
the list when Show Me St. Louis continues. Welcome back to Show Me St. Louis. You know, over the years, the fabulous Fox Theater has had some pretty incredible performers take that stage. Grab your calendar. We're going to run through a list of some of the top shows and artists you can see this season. Mary J. Blige will be in town next Wednesday, September 13th, and boy, does she put on a show. This talented woman has eight multi-platinum albums and nine Grammy Awards. Her stop here in St. Louis is part of her Strength of a Woman tour. The concert starts at 8. Tickets start at $55. Speaking of R&B singers, Grammy nominee Deborah Cox has the lead role in The Bodyguard the Musical. This breathtaking romantic thriller is based on the smash hit film of the same name and will feature classic songs Whitney Houston made popular, I Want to Dance with Somebody, and of course, I Will Always Love You. The Bodyguard will be on stage October 3rd through the 15th. Tickets start at $35. Jerry Seinfeld recently sleep. added a second show for his signature stand-up routine, Seinfeld Live. The first one sold out pretty quickly, so now you have another chance to see the comic. He'll take the stage the same night as before, Friday, October 27th. His second show will start at 10 p.m. Tickets for that show start at about $50. The next Broadway musical to roll into the Fox after The Bodyguard is On Your Feet. This musical takes you behind the music and inside the real story of the record-making and groundbreaking couple, Emilio and Gloria Estefan, who, in the face of adversity, found a way to end up on their feet. It will feature some of the most iconic songs and is said to be one of the most inspiring stories in music history. It's here November 7th through the 19th. After that is Rodgers and Hammerstein's The King and I. It's been called the duo's finest work. It will be at the Fox November 28th through December 10th. It's set in 1860s Bangkok and tells the story of the unconventional relationship that develops between the King of Siam and a British school teacher whom the King brings to town to teach his many wives and children. It won the Tony Award for Best Musical Revival in 2015. Another Rodgers and Hammerstein original, Cinderella, will be here at the end of the year. It's a contemporary take on the classic tale that features an orchestra, jaw-dropping transformations, and all the moments you love and remember from the animated movie, like the pumpkin and the glass slipper. There are also a few new twists. Cinderella will be at the Fox December 27th through the 31st. A couple of Christmas classics will unfold on that big stage this year. Everyone's favorite reindeer will be in town this November. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the musical, which is based on the longest running and highest rated holiday television special, will tell the story of a young Rudolph who, because of his bright, shiny nose, is left out of those reindeer games. The cast and crew will be in town November 21st and 22nd. Tickets start at around $30. And Charles Dickens' classic tale, A Christmas Carol, will come to life December 14th through the 17th. This Yuletide tale follows Scrooge, whose values are focused exclusively on profit and his conflicts with the struggling Cratchit family. The touching climax is based on Dickens' belief that the ills of a greedy world can be healed by brotherhood and unselfishness. You can find more information about all the shows I just mentioned on the theater's website, fabulousbox.com. We're coming right back. Welcome back. The list of great shows at the Fabulous Fox for the rest of this year is impressive, but 2018 might be even more exciting. The Hills come alive in February with a brand new production of The Sound of Music. It tells the story of Maria and the Von Trapp family. This incredible show will be in town February 2nd through the 4th. And take note, on Friday, February 2nd, a free child's ticket will be offered with the purchase of an adult ticket. The evening will also include pre-show activities in the Fox Theater lobby thanks to the Fox Performing Arts Charitable Foundation. So to learn more about that, go to foxpacf.org. The hit musical and winner of six Tony Awards, a Grammy, and thousands of standing ovations, Chicago will also be at the Fox. The show is now the longest-running American musical in Broadway history. It's run here. It's March 2nd through the 4th. It's set in the 1920s and tells the story of Roxy Hart. It's one of my all-time favorites. The 2016 Tony Award winner for Best Musical Revival, The Color Purple, will play the Fox March 20th through April 1st. With a soul-raising score of jazz, gospel, ragtime, and blues, The Color Purple gives an exhilarating new spirit to the Pulitzer Prize-winning story of a young woman's journey to love and triumph in the American South. It is a can't-miss show. 
Two more really exciting shows we can expect in 2018. The crazy smash hit Hamilton, which tells the story of America then as told by America now. I saw it in Chicago and it is even better than you expect it to be. It will be at the Fox for two weeks, April 3rd through the 22nd. It features a score that blends hip hop, jazz, blues, rap, R&B and Broadway. Tickets are not yet on sale, but we'll let you know as soon as they are. And the Book of Mormon is backed by popular demand and will close out the Broadway series season May 29th through June 3rd. This outrageous musical comedy follows the misadventures of a mismatched pair of missionaries sent halfway across the world to spread the good word. On sale ticket dates haven't been released for this show yet either. Single tickets, however, for the rest of the shows are on sale now. You can purchase tickets by calling the Fox Theater box office at 314-534-1111. Stop by the box office in person or go to Metro Ticks. Com. That does it for us this morning. Happiest birthdays to the fabulous Fox. We'll see you tomorrow.